students. So today we're going to focus on one of the skills, which is the analysis of results of the Hershey and Chase experiment and how that uh, ended up being the experiment that provided the uh, definite evidence that DNA is the genetic material and not proteins. So if you recall from um, last year and even ninth grade, um, when, when the transforming agent in Frederick Griffith's experiment was determined. Uh, scientists didn't know if that transforming agent that was being passed on from one cell to another was DNA or proteins. And if you recall, most scientists at the time believed that proteins carry the genetic material because there are so many proteins in our bodies and um, there's 20 different amino acids that make up proteins and proteins are very complex. So it makes more sense for proteins to carry the genetic material when in comparison to DNA or an acrylic acid, it's only made up of four bases and it's quite simple. So in the, in the, in the mid 20th century, scientists were still not sure whether DNA or protein was a genetic material. And there were some um, proponents like um, Avery McLeod and McCarty that proposed that DNA was a genetic material, but it wasn't until 1952 when Hershey and Chase conducted a series of experiments and they had experimental evidence that DNA was the genetic material indeed. So the, um, the purpose of this video lesson is to go over the Hershey-Chase experiment and kind of show you what um, these two scientists were able to discover. So since it was in between proteins and DNA as to which one carried the genetic material, uh, they devised a very interesting setup. So they knew that these viruses right here, uh, known as T2 bacteriophages, were viruses that could infect bacteria. And if you look at the structure of a virus, it's, it's very simple. The outer coat is made up of protein and um, the interior is made up of its genetic material like DNA. So they thought, well, what if we were to grow these um, viruses in two different isotopic mediums and we radioactively label um, different parts of the virus? So for experiment one, they were testing proteins and what they did was they labeled the protein coat of the virus with sulfur 35 because sulfur is present in um, proteins but not DNA. Um, and in experiment two, what they labeled was the interior, which was the DNA, and they labeled that with phosphorus 32 because phosphorus is present in DNA but not proteins. So then um, they were put in a medium um, and they allowed the virus to infect the bacteria. So the virus does what a, a virus is supposed to do, which is it injects its genetic material into the bacteria. So then the idea was if the protein was the one that was being infected, I mean uh, injected, sorry, then that means that the, the bacteria would have the radioactive sulfur 35 um, that was labeled in the protein right? And if the DNA was the one that was being injected as the genetic material, then um, after the virus finished invading the cell, injecting the cell with, with its genetic material, then um, the bacteria would have the radioactive sulfur. So then what ended up happening was the following. There was no radioactivity inside the cells of the bacteria. So that means that whatever the uh, virus infected the bacteria with, it was not the protein, right? Because the protein was radioactively labeled. And in experiment two, they did find radioactivity. So since they had labeled the DNA with the radioactive phosphorus 32, and they found radioactivity in the cells, they could determine um, with evidence that what was being transferred from the virus into the bacteria was the DNA. Um, so what were their conclusions? Well, um, of course they had to, they had to centrifuge the phage slash bacteria medium, 
um, and in order to interpret these results, they had to uh, measure what was found in the supernatant and the pellet. So, for example, in experiment one, after the phage was grown with the radioactive sulfur 35, um, they centrifuge it, and when you centrifuge a solution, it separates it into different densities. So then what ends up happening is um, the supernatant is the liquid that contains the lighter substances. So um, the supernatant was radioactive, and it's what contained the proteins. Um, the pellet right here at the bottom, the pellet was not radioactive. And the pellet actually had the bacteria because that was of a denser structure. So they found the radioactivity in the supernatant, um, which means that um, only the virus remained um, radioactive and not the bacteria. So that means that whatever the virus had injected the bacteria, it was not the genetic material. So the conclusion was that proteins are not the genetic material. Um, for experiment two, uh, we see that after the phage was grown with the radioactive phosphorus, phosphorus 32, and it was centrifuge, that means that the virus, the viral particles and the bacterial particles were separate. Um, you could see that the supernatant, or the lighter liquid here at the top that carries the virus, it was not radioactive because it was not the proteins that were labeled, but actually the DNA. And the radioactivity was actually found here in the pellet. That means that the DNA that was radioactively, radioactively labeled with phosphorus 32 was injected into the bacteria because the radioactivity was in the pellet, and the pellet is what um, contains the bacterial cells. So this proved that DNA is the genetic material and not proteins. So that is a summary of the Hershey Chase